Democratic leader. Ask consent the quorum call be suspended. Without objection. Mr. President, a few years ago, a woman who works in my office in Chicago, actually cleans up the office in the evenings, was so excited when she learned that her daughter had been accepted to college. It was a dream come true for a woman who had immigrated to the United States, taken some of the hardest, most menial, manual jobs in the hopes that her daughter would one day have a better life. She sat down with my chief of staff in Chicago to tell, tell her about the details, and immediately we knew that there was much more to the story. Her daughter had been accepted not just at another college or university, she had been accepted at a for-profit college in the Chicagoland area. The for-profit colleges and universities are notorious. The numbers tell the story. Two simple numbers. 9% of high school graduates go on to for-profit colleges and universities. The University of Phoenix, DeVry, pretty well-known names. 9% of students go to those schools. But 33% of all the student loan defaults are students from for-profit colleges and universities. Why? Why is this one category of higher education so notorious for students starting and ending up deeply in debt to the point where they can't pay it back? Well, the reasons are simple and very obvious. They overcharge the students and they undereducate them. They make promises that are wild and can't be kept. They give them courses of doubtful value and don't tell them that any hours that they earn at those for-profit schools can't be transferred to real city colleges, community colleges, and universities. So the students are stuck. At some point, some of them quit piling on the debt and just basically walk away. All the promises of all the jobs and careers that were supposed to come from this are never going to materialize. It is a classic fraud, and sadly, our government is part of that fraud. You see, we accredit those schools. We tell that cleaning lady and her family that these are good schools and universities. The federal government does that. It offers federal loans to these students to go to these schools. Is it any wonder the students and their families think they're doing the right thing for their future? The federal government gave a stamp of approval. Well, what happens when those schools really reach the end of the road? What happens when those same for-profit colleges and universities go bankrupt? The students in a terrible position, deeply in debt, with courses that are meaningless, with their lives compromised, and nowhere to turn. We decided long ago to create an opportunity for these students to get out of this dilemma, one that we shared in by accrediting these schools, something called the borrower defense, which allows these students, if they were defrauded, to discharge their student loans and get on with their lives. Today, hundreds of thousands of students who were defrauded by their for-profit colleges are desperately waiting for Secretary of Education Betsy DeVos to discharge their federal student loans under the provision of federal law known as the borrower defense. Congress created the borrower defense provision to ensure students' lives are not ruined by the misconduct and deception of these schools. In 2014, for-profit Corinthian colleges collapsed. It left more than 70,000 students nationwide with worthless credits they couldn't transfer and mounds of student debt. The students had been lured, in, lured into those Corinthian schools with false promises, inflated placement rates, income projections. We know that for a fact. We have the data to show that they were lying to the students about what graduation from Corinthian could mean in their lives. And over the last five or six years, nearly every other major for-profit college, nearly every one of them, has faced federal and state lawsuits and investigations for predatory practices similar to Corinthian colleges. The result has been hundreds of thousands of defrauded students across America who are seeking discharges which we say they are entitled to under federal law. Secretary Betsy DeVos has allowed more than 200,000 borrower defense applications to pile up at the department, nearly 11,000 from my own home state. But listen to this, Mr. President. Secretary DeVos has not approved a single claim for more than a year. 200,000 applications stacking up at the Department of Education, not one approved. So who are some of these borrowers that are languishing? What is their story? 
Let me tell you about two of them. One is Jessica, Tucson, Arizona. Jessica attended the Art Institute of Tucson from 2009 to 2012. It was owned by a failed for-profit education management corporation, EDMC. Heartbreakingly, Jessica says, I have experienced unbelievable amounts of stress and depression due to this situation. I've been placed on antidepressants and anti-anxiety medication over the years and been through therapy. I have self-harmed and contemplated suicide because I felt so trapped and unable to recover or move forward. I have a general feeling of worthlessness because I feel like my potential has been squandered. She went to the Art Institute of Tucson and her experience has led her to this de desperate situation. She tried to better herself. Instead of that bright future, she's left with a mountain of debt and nothing to show for it but deep financial, social, and psychological pain. She says, every aspect of my life has been affected. And so, is Secretary Betsy DeVos trying to help Jessica? No, Secretary DeVos is making it worse. Jessica submitted her borrower defense application almost four years ago, in 2016. She's waited for this period of time to hear anything from the Department of Education. What is the excuse of that? I mean, if someone writes a letter to my office and doesn't get a reply, and they come back to me and say, well, are you going to answer this, Durbin? We send a reply. We try to do it promptly with everyone. But how can Secretary DeVos be holding these things up for years while these students see a mountain of debt growing? As she waits, Jessica's loans are in forbearance, where they can continue to gather interest, meaning that the total amount owed continues to grow. She's just one of 4,518 home borrowers from Arizona who are stuck waiting for Secretary DeVos to use the authority that Congress gave her to discharge fraudulent loans. I mentioned Colorado earlier. Around 3,600 defrauded borrowers from Colorado are waiting for relief. Jonathan from Westminster, Colorado was one of them. He attended DeVry, sadly a Chicago-based for-profit school, studying to be an electronics engineer. He's a father and a husband who was trying to provide more for his family. He took out student loans. It sounded like the right investment. He currently owns, owes nearly $100,000 in outstanding federal student loans from attending DeVry, twice of what he, told his he was told his education would cost. Of his debt, Jonathan says, my credit has been destroyed. I couldn't repay these loans in two lifetimes, even if my degree had any value to employers. Sadly, it doesn't. Employers don't even recognize his degree. Jonathan says, my student loans are the millstone around my family. The debt I owe has made my kids not want to attend college at all. They see no value in it. Their own father has an engineering degree but can't get hired anywhere because his school was a scam. Those are the words of Jonathan. So not only has this fraudulent school taken away his future by burdening him with a worthless degree and piles of debt, in many ways it affects his children's future. Jonathan applied for a borrower defense discharge in 2017, three years ago. He's been waiting to hear from Secretary Betsy DeVos. Secretary DeVos' failure to provide him with relief, he says, quote, has caused him to lose faith that the government will actually pr protect students like him. Secretary DeVos has cruelly ignored defrauded borrowers like Jessica and Jonathan. But what's more, she's trying to make it almost impossible for future borrowers like them to secure the relief that Congress intended by rewriting the rules. In August, Secretary DeVos released a new version of the borrower defense rule that places unreasonable burdens on borrowers to attain relief. The result, the department estimates that the DeVos rule will deny nearly $11 billion in relief to borrowers compared to the current rule. In September, I introduced a resolution in the Senate to, overtone the to overturn the DeVos borrower defense rule. Forty-two of my colleagues have joined me in co-sponsoring it. I plan to bring this resolution to the vote on the Senate floor, where it only needs a simple majority to pass. At that time, my colleagues on both sides of the aisle will have a chance. Will they stand with Secretary DeVos's actions, or I should say, lack of actions for three or four years? Will they deny help to defrauded students, or will they stand with young people like Jessica and Jonathan, trying to get their lives back together, trying to get Congress to implement the one law it passed that could help them? 
It's a choice that seems pretty easy for most American people when they hear this uh, scenario described. A recent opinion poll in the Anchorage Daily News criticized Secretary DeVos for siding with for-profit colleges that have defrauded students and illegally denying student loan debt relief to thousands of students. Even in Alaska, hundreds of borrowers are waiting for borrower defense discharges. Nationally, Americans agree that these defrauded borrowers deserve relief. In 2016, New American Poll, 78% of Americans said that students should have their federal student loan debt discharged if their school deceived them. That's pretty basic, isn't it? If you were cheated, you ought to be taken care of. When you break the numbers down by party, 87% of Democrats, 71% of Republicans, vast majorities supported relief for these students. So when it comes time to vote on my resolution to overturn the DeVos borrower defense rule, denying relief to defrauded borrowers, I hope my colleagues will stand with the students and the American people. I yield the floor.